All right, everyone, most of the public, like the normies of society, when they think of the term election interference, they think of, like, Russian espionage agents going into the voting place, I guess, and switching ballots. Or they think of, like, in you know, Chinese or Russian hackers, you know, going into a campaign website and grabbing up emails and disclosing to the public what politicians are actually doing, and it's very scary for them because they don't want to see the truth, and that's psychologically pretty much the reason why I think it terrifies them. They're terri they they want to keep the music playing as the Titanic sings. And so when you say, oh, you know, realize you're about to fucking plunge into the cold water. Oh, no, fucking listen to this song. It's some great shit. You just want to be distracted. It's bread and circus bullshit for the masses. Uh, but the actual election interference that's been happening has been a steady erosion of the, of the concept of free speech and expression on the Internet. And the funny thing is it's almost always happening courtesy of U.S. firms because the U.S., of course, uh, Silicon Valley, Facebook is a U.S. firm, you know, in Instagram because Zuckerberg. Uh, you know, you've got Apple, you've got Microsoft, you've got Google and its offshoots, you you know, Alphabet, a huge parent firm, then Google, a huge parent firm, YouTube, arguably now a parent firm of its own subsidiaries, too. <laughs> it's got all these little sub-compartments, uh, you know, uh, Twitter and so forth. <clears throat> They're U.S. firms. So it's interesting to see Twitter banning a couple of official campaign accounts from the UK, namely for Carl Benjamin, better known as Sargon of Akkad. He's running, I believe, as a UKIP MEP candidate there. Uh, and then Tommy Robinson as well. Uh, and I'm assuming that this is not in a vacuum. I'm assuming that these campaign accounts were specifically targeted by the UK's political system. And the thing is, because of the, the UK's uh, uh, vast amount of sort of dystopian censorship loving, they lean on these tech firms to sort of do what they want. Meanwhile, of course, you know, they can use Gab, they can use Mines, they can have a BitChute channel and nobody cares. Tommy Robinson is, and Sargon are still on YouTube, but they get algorithmically demoted every day. I get demoted too, but at least I'm not in non-stop limited state like Robinson is. And he doesn't even put edgy shit there. He can literally make a video of himself making soup and it'll be declared unsuitable for most audiences. It's just so dumb how this is happening. People are so dumb to take seriously the claims of the tech firms. It's especially funny when it's Twitter. Because remember, it wasn't that long ago. Jack Dorsey sits down with his his lawyer friend or whatever she is, concubine, uh, and talks to Tim Pool on Rogan's podcast. By the way, big story of the day was that. You know, everyone talking about for fucking week. Congrats to Tim Pool, by the way, for making Jack Dorsey look like he doesn't even understand his own fucking company, let alone the internet or the constitution or common sense or marketing or anything else. It's amazing how Twitter is still around with somebody like that calling the shots at Twitter. Uh, so he says, well, you know, we've got some changes to make, we've, you know, it was problematic. Yeah, maybe we shouldn't be so bad happy. Yeah, we're really trying, people. We're trying hard, but, you know, reasons and stuff. And he, he makes a big show, and, and at the time I said, look, he's being disingenuous. He's not going to change jack shit. The way he's reacting, he just does, he doesn't even want to be there because he realizes, wow, Tim Pool's making me look like a fucking idiot, and my lawyer too. We don't even know what the fuck we're talking about. This is bad. You know, some optics problems here. I'm surprised they haven't banned Tim Pool for making Jack Dorsey look like an idiot. But, uh, yeah, so he, he shows them up. Everyone tells, you know, Dorsey basically, you know, you suck, you need to make changes. Oh yeah, we're going to do that. What are the changes they make? The first proposal they make is, well, we're going to fundamentally overhaul Twitter. You know, this was like last week, I think. We're going to fundamentally overhaul it so you're not following people, you're following like ideas and like genres of, of topics and stuff. Which is like, nobody's asking for it. That would piss off even the normies on site. So there's your branding genius right there. Now you've got this happening. These are official political accounts. They are not run by Sargon and Robinson. They're run by people who happen to support their political campaigns. What other definition can you possibly use for election interference than to begin banning official campaign accounts? Now look, we've got some, for instance, in the U.S. election. You've got dozens of Democrats running in the primaries. You've also got a bunch of, of no-name Republicans already primarying Trump, although none of them have recognition other than Weld, and he'll get like 1% of the vote. It's not a big threat to him, but, you know, they're there. What would happen if, like, one of their accounts got banned? Oh, well, you said they're on, like, Gravel's team posts some edgy shit sometimes. Does that mean that he should be banned? Like, basic, basically, you, what, what the normies are saying, you, this is what they're telling me. You are okay with the idea that not only should multi-billionaires from multinational companies, these big tech firms, not only should they be able to tell you what books you can access, what shows you can watch, who can or can't make a living online, you even want them to ban political campaigns based on the people that are part of them. 
You want them to literally have a significant say over the entire political structure of the Western world? Corporations, you, you really want to go down there? I remember when liberals had a problem with that, like with Citizens United. Corporations uh, aren't people, or, or they're people, but they're bad people. We need to constrain them. This is terrible. Cor companies are going to come in and control our political system for the rich. What, what fucking income bracket do you think Jack Dorsey and his team are part of? How much money do you think their big wig lawyers make? And they're cooperating, and this is foreign collusion too, they're cooperating with a foreign entity, namely the UK's government. There's, oh, they've got people over there, like it was um, the, the second in command of the Labour Party or something, he's, he's that doofus, talking about, well, we're going to try to send letters to Google and all these sites to get J to Tommy Robinson banned. So he can't even campaign for office. So basically you've got these non-individuals now in Europe that don't even get represented. In fact, they are reviled and actively abused by their own governments for political and social reasons. They're being aided by billionaires in the United States and liberals don't have a problem with this? The left is going to tell me that this is the road that we need to go down as a society? Yeah, it's okay for someone to get, basically, they can't bank. They can't do, do any bank, like Chase will ban a MasterCard ship. So they can't have a bank account. They can't fundraise in any non-standard way. Hell, they can't even use some crypto exchanges. They can't run for office to try to change anything. They can't speak in public. They can't speak online. You've basically turned them into a non-entity. And the problem is, most of the people being targeted this way, if they are called extreme or bigoted or something, those monikers don't even apply to them. They're not extremist individuals. It would never have never have I seen Sargon walk down the street and hit somebody in the head with a baseball bat for having the wrong political views. And yet he gets treated like a pariah. Most of these people have probably never had a five minute interpersonal conversation with him. Tommy Robinson, he seems like a fine individual. You don't have to believe in his political beliefs. Most people don't. They reject them out of hand. So then, you know, you would think, why even bother suppressing people that supposedly are so unpalatable and lowbrow and though these disgusting people with their disgusting ideas? Well, then why bother deplatforming them? Why do they need to be constantly abused? And it doesn't work anyway. All this does is give them more attention. It's fucking bullshit. Any person who calls themselves a leftist and is on board with this, my God. You, uh, you really swallowed the corporate Kool-Aid. That's a really long, a good long-term branding strategy by the corporations to make censorship by billionaires seem like a good thing. Oh yeah, by the way, this is the progressive thing that we're going to do. We're going to start sense. We're, we're going to start telling your fellow citizens, little people like working and middle class individuals, who they can vote for and who can actually even campaign on these platforms. What a wonderful idea. This, this totally will not have negative long-term repercussions. And then people that try to point out how dumb that is are getting algorith uh, algorithmically manipulated. Like my channel, the growth has slowed to a crawl. People are still seeing my videos, but as far as related goes, I guess in the wake of the Data Society report, a lot of those channels had gotten demoted. Like they could no longer be recommended up next, trending and stuff. They get manipulated in search results. I guess it's finally affecting mine over the last few weeks as well. There's no other explanation for it. I'm not doing anything particularly different. And as far as the content getting uh, attention from people that are already subscribed, it's still just as high as ever. But it's not reaching new groups of people. YouTube is becoming an echo chamber. And YouTube, <laughs> just think, this is the scary part. YouTube is the least manipulated. YouTube is the least onerous, burdensome, and authoritarian of all of the main tech platforms other than maybe Amazon. And now Amazon started doing book burning. Yeah, uh, I really want multi-billionaires telling me what books I can read, what campaigns I can interact with, what ideas are allowed or disallowed. This is a good idea to some people. I question their sanity. I think that if anyone shouldn't be voting, it's people that take that sort of line seriously. That's about all. Peace out.